What exactly are the yips? I guarantee you'll learn something new if you watch this video. We'll start with an example. Take legendary former Dodgers second baseman Steve Sachs, rookie of the year, two-time World Series champion, regarded as a slick fielding, reliable second baseman until he got the yips. In 1983, Sachs had an abysmal 30 errors from second base, often throwing the ball over the first baseman's head into the stands to the point where fans along the first baseline started wearing helmets just for protection. He had a few other mediocre years, but then was able to restore his reputation as a sterling defender and had a long, successful career. By the way, trivia question, who was on deck when Kirk Gibson hit his famous World Series walk-off home run? Steve Sachs. People with the yips often describe a loss of control of their limbs and inability to perform a previously learned movement. And some people can have abnormal associated movements like cramps or movements of the muscles or stutters, sputters, even tremors of the affected limbs. And a movement that was so natural to them that they perform so expertly is now impossible. Many baseball players over the years have had the yips often losing throwing control. Some famous examples include Steve Blass or the pitcher Rick Ankeel, who suddenly had no control pitching and was walking everyone. Also Chuck Knobloch and Mackie Sasser. In a recent example, the pitcher Daniel Bard was actually out of the major leagues between 2014 and 2019, but came back successfully in 2020 with a career-high fastball velocity at the time of this taping at age 37 with an ERA of 2.05. More on Daniel Bard later. Now athletes in other sports can also get the yips. For instance in golf when gripping the club often with putting or chipping but occasionally with a full swing golfers can have a tension in their arms often with movement and cramps. This is so called golfers cramp or the yips in golf. Keith Medlicott, the English cricket bowler, suddenly lost the ability to properly release his ball and he had to retire. Eric Bristow, a five-time world champion dart thrower, was suddenly inaccurate and was said to have darditis. So what exactly causes the yips? I think most people watching this video will presume that it's entirely psychological, but there are actually two causes of yips, surprisingly. Now the first definitely is psychological, so-called performance anxiety, or in a less politically correct and derogatory way, you could call it choking. Just to be clear, I'm not an athlete. I've never played baseball in my life. I definitely couldn't do it any better. But you can imagine the tremendous stress these athletes are under. Not only are you performing for your team and the thousands or tens of thousands of fans, but also for your reputation and your future livelihood. Imagine you have a few bad throws and you're nervous, anxious, losing confidence, you're tense. And of course, it's very difficult to perform a finely coordinated movement. This is a very major cause of yips. And the clues that the cause of yips are psychological would be if the movement is performed well during practice but not during the big game or if it improves with stress reduction, meditation, and counseling. And of course there are sports psychologists who have a lot of experience with this phenomenon and it's also recommended to practice the movement as much as possible and in as close to a real game situation as possible to gain confidence and comfort. But there's another cause of yips which is not psychological logical at all, which is called task-specific dystonia. This is an abnormal movement disorder that occurs in response to performing a specific and repeated learned task. The most common form of this in the general population is writer's cramp. This is when you're trying to write and your hand becomes tense and cramps up and you can't open it and maybe you even have to use your other hand to open it up. And of course, this is common and benign and not necessarily associated with any neurological disease. And there are many examples of task-specific dystonia with various learned tasks, and it's fairly common amongst athletes and musicians. For example, one of my former patients was a harpist. He wasn't a professional, but he was a high-level amateur who played for years, even decades. And when he played the harp, he experienced a forced curling of his fingers. And the only way to fix it would be to adjust the position of his hand so he would be performing a slightly different motor motion. And in fact, many people with task-specific dystonia are able to make the syndrome go away 
by adjusting their position. For instance, a pitcher could change the grip on the ball or a golfer could hold the club in a different way. But in some people, they're unable to make the movement go away and there are musicians and athletes where task-specific dystonia has completely ruined their career. And to return to golfers' yips for a moment, this is almost always caused by task-specific dystonia rather than performance anxiety because it's almost always associated with abnormal movements and cramps. And as I said, some golfers can make it go away by gripping the club in a different way. There's actually a report in the literature that the drug memantine, an N-methyldeaspartate inhibitor used to treat Alzheimer's disease, could be beneficial. There's actually one great article on a professional golfer who had very bad golfer's yips, who actually underwent a procedure called deep brain stimulation of the globus pallidus, part of the brain involved in initiating movement. And what you're looking at is a before and after video of his swing after having the procedure, where stimulation of this area of the brain actually caused resolution of his symptoms. Now, it's very unclear what causes task-specific dystonia in general. There's strong evidence that it's coming from the brain, but if we do an autopsy of someone with task-specific dystonia, the autopsy is normal. However, functional MRI studies show that there's abnormal activation of the motor areas of the brain. So something about repeating a task over and over again in some people causes this sort of rewiring which causes abnormal activation of muscles and this leads to muscle tension and movements and tremor and sputtering and all the things we see clinically in task-specific dystonia and it can be very, very difficult to treat. So in an individual athlete, how do we know if the yips is due to performance anxiety, in other words, if it's psychological, or if it's neurological and due to task-specific dystonia? Well, it's hard to say, but generally speaking, if the problem is only during the game, not during practice, that sort of suggests it's more performance anxiety, or if it can be improved with stress reduction, counseling, meditation, it's probably more performance anxiety. Whereas if there is an abnormal movement or contraction of muscles or tremor associated with the problem, it's more likely to be task-specific dystonia or if it can be improved by changing position, the grip on the club or the ball, then it's probably more task-specific dystonia, which is not the kind of thing that you can simply make go away by resolving stress. Although it's said that people with task-specific dystonia, the problem is often more severe and prominent during periods of stress, and so athletes can become frustrated with the problem, which can cause anxiety, which can further exacerbate the yips. Now, the treatment of task-specific dystonia in general is very, very limited. Let's take writer's dystonia. Some people have this form of it where instead of having a cramp, they have tremor and abnormal handwriting. Now, of course, you can try conservative options like gripping the pen in a different way, as a baseball pitcher could try gripping the ball or throwing the ball in a different way, but sometimes that really doesn't work. And one treatment I've had success with is Botox injections into the muscles that seem to be triggering the contraction or tremor, and that can be very effective. But in an athlete, do you really want to inject a toxin which weakens the muscles into the limb? The weakness as a side effect may be greater than the potential benefits. And of course, treatments such as deep brain stimulation, which you saw in that golfer, have potentially serious side effects. So it really is very, very difficult. And a lot of athletes with the yips, it simply ended their career. But some people are able to recover. So I mentioned earlier the baseball pitcher Daniel Bard, who is out of the majors but returned after several years. He was previously an overhand pitcher, and his sense of loss of control was so severe that he was trying to alter his delivery. And he mentioned in an article that he was attempting to become a submarine pitcher, in other words, an underhand delivery, which is very unusual, but sometimes effective. Now, this history of averting the problem by changing the, the delivery is strongly suggestive of a diagnosis of task-specific dystonia rather than performance anxiety. Of course, I'm just speculating. I don't know the exact details of his situation. But when he returned to the majors after several years, he was not a submarine pitcher, but there is a slight change in his delivery. He was more overhand before, maybe a little more sidearm now, but not really that much change. So I'd be interested to know what exactly did he do 
to get better. But return to form out of after so many years out of the majors is perhaps one of the greatest comebacks in baseball history. So that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned one thing that the yips isn't always purely psychological and is sometimes caused by a specific neurological disease called task specific dystonia which can be very very difficult to treat. Now I normally make videos about multiple sclerosis and I plan to stick to that topic primarily but I'd be interested in some feedback. Do you like it when I make videos about something else? Maybe something related to neurological disease as it affects society or people of interest or do you want me to stick to my core topic of multiple sclerosis and as always let me know if you have suggestions for other videos. Well well Steve Sachs from New York City.